What's up guys? Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're talking about Florida billing code and Sheffield product approvals in that area. Today I've got Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So Florida building code, what is it? Florida building code requires all of their metal roof systems to be rated and carry a Florida product approval. Uh, basically, it is a designated set of testing that is done on a particular panel profile, and then you have to submit it to Florida building code for approval. And they either you know give you their blessing or uh, tell you that you don't meet the requirements. Florida product approval doesn't necessarily mean it can be used in any location. There's different types of Florida product approvals. Just because you have a Florida product approval doesn't mean that the design pressure you have in that Florida product approval will meet the design pressure you need for your area. So it's not it's not just a blanket, oh, I have a Florida product approval, everything's all good. Um, it's just saying that you meet the requirements set forth for the type of approval that you have. Do different product approvals, uh, is there just one set for the entire state or does it vary by location, by county? How does that work? Yeah, so there's two main types of Florida product approvals that we deal with. And you have HVHZ, which is high velocity hurricane zone product approvals, and then you have non HVHZ. Depending on which county you're in or which area part of the state you're in, will really determine which one they're going to accept. If you're along the coast, you can pretty much count on needing a HVHZ approval. If you're in the middle of the state, maybe up in the panhandle, more towards uh, the border states you might be able to get away with a non-HVHC approval. So it really depends on what your county uh, you know, is, is requiring from you. Now, you mentioned that roofing requires a product approval in Florida, but does that mean for all buildings, residential and commercial? If you're going and you're pulling a permit, they're going to more than likely be asking for a Florida product approval if it's going to be a roof covering system. They have a list of uh, products that require approvals, and roofing is definitely one of them. So what does it take for a contractor to be able to obtain one of these product approvals from, say, Sheffield Metals? So to go along with the product approvals, the contractor also has to be part of a QA program, a quality assurance program. Uh, it's run by a third party. Right now, we use Keystone certifications, as do most people. They're uh, the main ones that I know of. Basically, if a contractor wants to use our product approvals, we don't charge anything extra for it. Uh, we have to write you a letter stating that you're able to be included in our program. They send that to Keystone. Keystone will reach out, basically talk about our QA manual, what talks about the uh, all the documentation that they need to keep. Usually it's a, uh, a checklist, making sure that your panels be enrolled in tolerance. Uh, you keep job information sheets, basically saying, you know, on this day, I rolled this panel at this address, kept a panel sample of it, verified dimensions, things like that. And then you get a QA audit once a year. Uh, and that's really the only cost to the, uh, to the contractors, whatever the QA certification charges. If you're a contractor in Florida, you should be pretty familiar with that process because it's not just Sheffield. It's everybody that has to go through it. But uh, basically, you get a letter of approval from us asking you to be asking, saying that you could be included in our program. You get in touch with the QA certification company and basically follow the guidelines that are already set up and keep track of your projects and uh, you know, make sure you maintain your, maintain your records. So which of Sheffield's panel profiles have Florida product approvals right now? So we have Florida product approvals currently on the inch and a half mechanical, the inch and three quarter snap block and the two inch mechanical. We have them in both steel and aluminum and we have both HVHD and non HVHD approvals depending on uh, the system and the, what it's installed over. We're looking at um, adding some more of the residential panels that we just tested uh, to our uh, Florida product approvals. Uh, they're going to be on the non HVHD side moving forward for now. Like I said, there's different testing requirements depending on whether you get a HVHD or non HVHD approval. Okay. Yeah. Tell me more about that. You know, how does Sheffield actually get these product approvals? There's two basic tests that you have to do. You have to test for uplifts and you have to test for uh, TAS 100, which is wind driven rain. So for a non HVHD approval, it's basically one uplift test. You test a field specimen one time, with the panel profile and gauge that you're that you're using and over the substrate that you're attaching it to. If you have an inch and a half mechanical and steel over plywood, that's one approval. If you have that same panel over B decking, that's another approval. For the HVHZ approvals, it gets a lot more in depth. Uh, instead of one uplift test, you need three. 
in those three tests, you'll have two tests that are spaced with a clip spacing that was what they call a field spacing. That's usually your clip spacing that's furthest apart. They'll take those two tests, they'll average out the design pressures from that, and they'll give you an average number. And then you also have to test what they call the corner test, which is basically a real a tighter clip spacing. Um, it could be anywhere as tight as six inches. Because in those different areas where you're going to see high velocity hurricane zone approvals required, usually you're going to have different clip spacings for different zones of a roof because you're going to have a lot higher design pressures that you're going to have to meet. You're going to have to have two fields and one corner uplift tests. The nice thing about that is having the different zones of the roof means that you can just use the tighter clip spacings in the areas that need them, right? You don't have to do a six inch clip spacing in your whole roof and, you know, drive up the cost with the additional clips and fasteners and labor and whatnot. You can use it in the different zones that are, that are called out for. Uh, the other test that's required for HVHZ is uh, the wind-driven rain test. It's basically they build a mock-up of a roof. It has a eave, it has a gable, it has a high side ridge, it has a valley, and they test for wind-driven rain. Uh, the test simulates uh, wind speeds up to 110 miles an hour and simulated rainfall of uh, up to 8.8 .8 inches an hour. It has this huge prop engine, and it basically just drives this water uh, into the into the system of this mock-up that you built and see if anything leaks. It's a pass or fail test. There's not a, you know, well, you did okay. It's You get one drop of water, you fail. So it's not only testing your uplifts, but now it's also testing the flashings that are used to put the roof together. So hopefully your roof will stay on and it will stay leak-free, you know, following those conditions. You know, with that being said, that's a lot of additional testing uh, for different panel profiles. So that's why you'll probably see more select panels with the HVHD approvals, um, and especially over different types of deckings that we see more common, whereas you might see some of the less common assemblies just have a non hvhd approval. So as we're wrapping up here, you know, how does Sheffield make it easy to work with us when it comes to our Florida product approvals? You know, who do people talk to? What information is available? How to get, how do they get those documents? Well, the first thing is that we have everything online, you know? So again, one of the things I love about the website, all the information's there. You don't have to have a secret password or no special handshake to be able to access the information. And that makes it really nice for our contractors. Cause like I said, you know, just cause you have an approval doesn't mean that you're always going to have the design pressures needed for those projects, you know, especially if you're in a certain area that you know you're going to need high design pressures. You can go online, you can look at our approvals, you can see what we have if they meet your needs. We have a full-time technical department in-house. We're pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, you can email, you can call, and uh, we turn things around pretty quick um, as far as, you know, be able to get you the letters and the information uh, to sign up for the QA program. We're trying to keep the cost in mind while still trying to provide the best performing system that we can. All right, Jeff. Well, thanks for the information. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about Sheffield's Florida product approvals, check out SheffieldMetals.com. Comment down below with any other questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.